Hello there. I'm playing uh, another training game. So I'm just continuing uh, the series. And let's see how it goes. It's 30 plus 20, so I have plenty of time to, to speak, to play. I'm facing a strong opponent, as you can see. So let's just play the Petrov or the Russian game, Russian defense. Okay, he goes for kind of main line, so d6. Just kick away the knight and then take the pawn. This is usual continuation. And we'll see later how it goes. Okay, let's take the pawn. I'll just turn on the um, move confirmation because I tend to draw many lines and then sometimes the line accidentally becomes the move. So let me just. Okay, let's now just go go back and play the game. Okay. Uh, D3. Let's just go back. So this is just usual usual stuff in Russian defense, Russian game, whatever you call it, Petrov. Okay, why, why do I get notifications every time? Oh, because I have two windows open. Leave, yes. Okay. Okay, this should be fine. Um, develops his bishop. So, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for castle, I'm looking for development. So, I might play this just to castle, or I might be tempted to play the bishop here, pinning the knight, but he'll just unpin. So I don't see much threat here. So let's just let's just develop. So let's just go with uh, with the bishop and uh, castle later on. I think this is just. So in the opening we are just playing for quick development. We, we don't mind mind much about theory, theoretical lines, theoretical evaluations. Let's leave that to, to Grandmasters. C4. Well, I have to admit I didn't see this move often. So let's see what does this move do. Okay, it takes away obviously the 5 square. What is the threat here? Uh, he probably wants to bring his knight, knight to C3 and he knows that uh, bringing knight in front of C pawn is usually bad. So I think this is his plan. Okay, should I worry about this plan? Should I try to stop this plan? I don't see how. I don't see how I can stop it. I think I'll just continue with my normal development. I don't see why not. I mean, this pawn is kind of backward, but okay. Let's just guess. Who. Next I want to bring out my knight and the bishop. The principle says the knights before bishops, so I will most likely bring my knight first to d7 and then either to e5 or c5. I think c5 is uh, somehow nice square for my knight. So something along these lines and then later on I can uh, develop the bishop. I don't see the uh, advantage of pinning the knight right now because he can just unpin. The spinning idea is uh, nice if he, he had committed his bishop. So for example, if his bishop was here, then yeah, this this spin could work, but now I don't see some advantage. So the principle of chess game is just uh, develop your pieces, bring them out and then think about pawn breaks, plans, middle game plans, whatever. Okay, he's developing, now he wants to go here. I don't, okay, I control this. He can go to c5 and then try to be annoying. But if he goes, goes to c5, I mean, he doesn't actually threaten anything because, yeah, it's just a one move threat, so I can just play c6 kick it away and then maybe go go for some pawn break. So I think I'll just continue up my development because I don't see any immediate threats. He can go here, I can just take, so I don't take, I don't care. Okay, let's go, 
Alright, let's, uh, let's just play knight to d7. And then see why not. This bishop doesn't look very really nice, it's blocked completely, so maybe he'll try to fianchetto. But nevertheless, it doesn't, in fact, affect my plans. So I try to make as few pawn moves as possible and just develop my pieces. This knight, well, this particularity of this opening needs two moves to be developed and then I can think about developing my bishop here or here or here. There are plenty of options for the bishop. Let's see what he does. I think his most likely response should be uh, bishop 2. Sorry. The arrows don't listen to me. Bishop to e5, e2, and then I don't, I, I don't see the <laughs> that this is a good move. I mean, what does it stop? Yeah, it stops knight to g4, but I think he's making too many pawn moves. This is my my feeling. I mean, he might be right. I, I might be wrong, but I think just too many pawn moves. So I'm thinking about knight c5. Just continue my development. If he takes, take. He has the backward pawn. I can solidify here. I don't mind about these double double pawns because they are just part of the pawn island here, so I don't mind about this. And these knights, I mean, where can he go? Here it will just be exchanged. I think c5 is nice, and then I can even uh, come to e6 one day. And aim for d4 or something like this. So let's just go here and uh, develop the knight. I'm just checking if he has some tactics he could try to kick it away. I can just then go to e6, bring my bishop out, or even fianchetto my bishop. I have plenty of options, so I'll just play a developing move. Which can't be wrong. At least this is the way I see it. Okay. So what else do we see in this position? Yeah, hitting this, but this is not important. Okay, he did play before before. He's my knight, but okay, I don't care. I can just put my knight on e6. It's a nice square for the knight, I think. He does get some space on the queen side, so this should not be neglected completely. What about a6? Hitting the pawn. He can just defend. And then my knight is out of the play. No, let's let's play toward the center, so. I just, I mean, both of my knights are now controlling center squares. So I should not be unsatisfied with my knights controlling all this. Okay, finally, he develops, he wants to castle. Now I can develop my bishop on d7. I don't see why not. And then try to play something like this. Or maybe bishop and then put bishop here. Not immediately, but sometimes. I see this this plan. So look to e8, putting it on in the open file, and then maybe remain over my knight here to g6. This is the pawn break I'm definitely looking at some point. Maybe even now, because I, I don't want my my dilemma here is do I want to, to just play play this move? I mean, is the bishop better on d7 than it is on c8? This is the question. So is it is he better here? Okay, from here he's controlling this diagonal. From here he's controlling this and this diagonal. Does this, this diagonal matter? I'm not sure. So maybe I should just go for the pawn break right away. Takes, takes, and I, then I can bring my bishop to f6. And this bishop can wait. Hmm. So d5. d5, and this threatens this. Uh, he has to take. 
well, almost. I mean, he, he can do some other moves, but he almost has to take because I, I then just threaten d4. Takes. And d4, of course, wins the material because I have it defended twice. So you can see that my knight on e6 is already doing uh, doing something. Okay, so maybe d5. If he pushes the pawn, then he just loses material. If he takes, I take. Let's say he takes, I take with the queen. He has isolated pawn. Hmm. I think I even like this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure does he have something else in his sleeve. I don't think so. So maybe just d5. I think I'll play d5. Yeah, it looks okay, as I can see it. I think he has to take... Oh, okay. I didn't foresee this move. D4. Oh. D4. Okay. I can take take. He has isolated queen pawn, but he has good good dynamical position. So I don't think I don't think this is something I want to do. And also this knight. If he plays d5 at some point, then this knight could be in trouble. He doesn't have many squares to go to. So maybe c6 at this point. Opening the queen, allowing for the escape square for the knight. Yeah, I didn't think about the d4. So d takes c4, let's see this one. Yeah, but this does just traps the knight. The knight is in trouble. So I think I have to play c6. Which is a fine move, it, it controls the, this knight and so on. If he wants to take, okay, I will take. We, we can both have isolated pawns, so I can take with the knight. Okay, so let's play c6 here. I think it's a good move. Okay, another pawn push. So, yeah, he continues to push his pawns. Okay, so the center is locked. This side of board is pretty much locked. So now I'm thinking about knight to e4. I'm just putting my rook and then maybe remaneuver the knight here. Yeah, this will be a close position with many, with lots of maneuvering and maneuvering. Maybe h6 at this point. I don't, I want to allow this kind of stuff. But okay, I have knight covering this. Okay, I think I'll just, I will just centralize and uh, develop my pieces. So we'll just play rook e, e8. And then maybe I will bring up my bishop here, my queen, sorry, my queen here, c7, bring, a, bring another piece or something, something like this, you know, these lines. Mm -hmm. Maybe queen here, hitting this, maybe go in the knight to f4, some ideas like this. This could work. I don't like my bishop on e7. It should find its way here somewhere. What about knight here? Oh. 
Okay, maybe I'm, I'm just overthinking. Maybe I can. I, I just need to to continue my development. I could bring my bishop here. This is also the idea. Releasing my rook and then put the bishop. If you can get to the bishop and hit hit the spawn, this is also an option. I think I just might do this. Because when this this is blocked. Maybe this is a good idea. Then I don't know what about this bishop and this rook. Should I just play bishop d8? Just coordinating my rooks. Okay, so one candidate move, second candidate move, third candidate move. I think I can play them in, in any order. But if I move here, he can go here. Oh, I can just take and then kick it away. This one is only protected by the king, but uh, it cannot be attacked in any other way. What about knight? Can I? I don't know what's wrong with the arrows. Okay, can I? Can I go with my knight here? Maybe in the future. On g6. Okay, let's put the queen here. Oh no, but uh, maybe. I want to have escape square for my knight, but I can do this later. Okay, let's just bring the, the bishop to f8 and maybe fianchetto the bishop. We'll see about this guy. I think this position is very slow, so I will have time to remaneuver. Okay, he jumps with his knight on e5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should I worry? This looks scary, but I, I'm not sure I should worry about this, actually. Maybe I could just continue with my plan and fianchetto the bishop. I can always chase this knight later. Mm -hmm. What can he do here? Yeah, I think this... This is good, I think. Should exchange some pieces. I, I have the space disadvantage, so I think I will exchange some pieces later. Okay, he goes for f4. He's threatening f5, maybe. And then I have to go back. Or I can go just here. Okay, I think I, I'll go. I don't think I get to the bishop. If he plays f5, I can just go here. And then I can start doing some, some kicking away of this knight. I need to be careful because now this is hit twice. Huh. So maybe. Look, okay, I'll just be aware of this. I'm missing lots of uh, moves from my opponent, so maybe I'm too focused on my plans and I don't see my opponent's plans. I didn't see this knight e5 and uh, followed by f4. So maybe I should have seen this. Hmm. 
G4. Okay, he's now really, he now really wants to go rough. He really wants to do some damage on my king side. Can I just play knight to d7 here? And then take his knight. Knight is 7 he takes the knight, I can take with whatever, queen, bishop. He goes here, I can just go here. I have this move if I when I when I move. My knight, I have this threat also. Now this will become very sharp. Hmm. I like this move, it, it frees very, it frees lots of things. And also, you can see that this. Bishop is undefended, and I have my rook here. And this is also something to consider. Maybe play f6, Win, winning some material. After everything is cleared away. Okay, let's let's do this. I have to exchange some pieces just to liberate my position. I mean the fianchetto structure is very strong against the the attacks, this kind of attacks. So I think if I play this correctly I should be able to survive with the attack. Uh -huh. If he takes I think I will take with the bishop. Just to develop a little further. Okay, he goes back. So this is undefended. So I'm thinking about something like this. So something like this. This should be calculated. So knight takes c5. If he wants to, he can defend his bishop maybe, I don't know, with some move, and then I can just come back. If he decides to take, I just take with the rook. If he decides to take, I can even take the, the knight for free here, threatening the rook, for example, or, or I could take this. If he takes with b takes c5, then again I can just take this, this guy. Yeah. I mean, he, he did put his knight behind the pawns, maybe he can just ignore and continue the pawn storm, but I think this is a strong move. Oh, sorry, this is a strong move, and also I can just close the position from here. I don't. What is his best response if I play knight takes c5? So what is his best response here? What can he do? I mean, I'm not afraid of any pawn storms. I can just ignore them. He cannot move the bishop anyway, anywhere. He cannot retreat. I have plenty of square squares for my knight. So yeah, let's let's. I, I I don't see. So if I if I don't see any refutation, I don't see why shouldn't I play the move. Maybe he has a refutation and I don't see it. Well, if you don't see, you don't see. But uh, if you don't see a ref refutation, then you should you should play the move, which means material.
So let's see what he, what will he do. The problem is when I take with the rook, I'm also hitting the knight, which is pinned. So he has many many problems to solve. I think his best move might be just to retreat the bishop. Okay, he comes back with the knight. Okay, this is also a good, good alternative. So now my, now my knight is now under a threat, so I have to do something. Maybe I could go here to a6 hitting the pawn. So I can go forward. This is isolated pawn now, so I can go forward. If he takes, okay, I let him take. Let me just go back. But I like this. We can play f6. No, this is a threat, so f6 is a threat, definitely. f6 is definitely a threat here. I can then just take. Oof. Okay. So I need to save save my knight. So the question is, should I go here? I have this threat. Go here. He takes. I take. I don't really like the position of this pawn. It looks weak. It's look. It looks vulnerable. I think I should just come back. I'm looking briefly at a6. If he takes, I take. Then this is a backward pawn. I don't like this. What if I take this immediately? I think this could be a good solution. So if I take this immediately, he takes, let's say, like this, and then can jump in here or just come back because my position favors the exchanges I think so I could just take and let him decide if he wants to take this way or what does he want to do here take let's say he takes this way yeah he's opening this line but I don't really care, I can just bring back my knight and if he takes then my bishop can can, can go here, protect the, the pawn and so on. Okay, let, let me take this knight and see how what he will he do. I can see some other resources in this position, like queen here. Okay, now he, now I have to save my knight. I jump here. I don't like this. What if I go here, hit this? No, but uh, yeah, then takes, and this is uh, weak. So I just go here. I think. No, I don't like going backward. This is the problem. It doesn't work. It doesn't really work. But does it? So if he takes, take. No, the, this guy will be too weak. This pawn is strong. I have to do this maneuver. Okay, let's let's just go back with the knight. I'm a pawn up. 
Let's see, does he have some compensation? Can he prove? I'm looking at this move. Maybe this this maneuvering this this putting my bishop here on e6. We'll see. Regarding the time management, you can see that he's playing very quickly. This is my experience that uh, people who play longer time controls online, they usually play like they play rapid. They just play fast. And okay, then I, I also I also do this many times. I play too fast, but now this is good when I'm recording. Then I don't have to to worry about this because I'm uh, spending too much time anyway just by speaking calculating and everything okay he goes here so he stopped my my idea and this one is could be could be interesting if this bishop was wasn't here so maybe maybe now it's time to to just go with my knight here and here just need to be aware of this weak pawn I mean, I can always defend it with, with the rook, so... Here, here, hitting this. And hitting this. Maybe some scenarios I can sacrifice and then check. Not sure. And this, I can even bring bring the bishop here. Yeah, and this, this defends the pawn. Okay, I don't see much active moves for him, so let's... Let's do this. And then I can bring my bishop here and suddenly this bishop will become very strong. Because this outpost and this outpost. Oh, but I'm also threatening this h3. I just realized. So he'll probably just push the pawn and then I can just come back here with my bishop. And then I can support the bishop with the queen. Maybe if he if he attacks with the with minor piece. Okay, he wants to exchange bishops and put his queen there. Oh. I could go for this, but then his queen is there, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I favor exchanges here definitely, but maybe the knight here threatening this. Hmm. That if I exchange he takes with the queen. I play my knight here. It's not as effective. But I do have a chance to give up my my bishop to to get rid of my you no know, good bishop. But I don't like, like his queen being there. I think I'll just go with the knight, maybe on this maneuver. Doubling up on the bishop later. Yeah. Okay, now I'm threatening this. So making threats and the position is slow, I, I have time to, to maneuver. Okay, this is expected. What about this bishop? Maybe I can bring it here, just make some threats. Yeah, this this bishop is not the, the hero of the game. Maybe later it will be. 
So let's just let's just make the this bishop must okay this is defended twice so let's just bring the, the bishop here and see what he has. This is an interesting maneuver as well. So bit tempo and then come with knight right here. Hmm. Let's just play this. Okay, hitting this. can just defend this by playing the rook here or here. I think I'll play my rook here so I can align with the queen. And this could give him some headaches. Problem is he can push and then, but I can always stack my bishop on h8. So I think I'll be fine here. Let's play rook to f8. Just defending this. Okay. The problem is that my this bishop is not playing currently, but okay. Maybe we can solve this problem later. Okay, he wants to triple. He wants to triple there. Oh. Yeah, let's just let's just enforce this square and maybe later think about exchanging yeah okay I'm hitting this pawn but he'll probably go here and I cannot take advantage of this okay he takes care. So my dark square bishop is really not not uh, in the good shape. Hmm. I put it here on h8, and then I go fianchetto my knight. Yeah, he, 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 has, he has the attack rolling, definitely. It's not very pleasant for me to play like this. I do have a pawn, but... No, he, he played the move, so yeah. Okay, this is defended enough, enough times, so I don't need to worry. I think he's attacking this three times. I have three defenders, so the guy should be fine. Let's, let's fianchetto the knight. So if he takes, I take, I still have this covered. If he doesn't take, I'll go here. And then I'm blocking this, this whole file. If he takes, I take with the uh, bishop still blocking the file. Yeah, my dark square bishop is really, really embarrassed here. We have to to do something, but let's let's try to exchange as many pieces as I can. Then it will be easier to free the bishop. Now all my pieces are tied to defense of f7. It can be very annoying. But if I get knight here, it will be much easier.
Okay, he takes, I take back. Okay, he now wants to jump here. I try to stop it, I'll have backward pawn. I mean, I could play this right away. If he comes here, I can go here. He doesn't have much squares to go to. So, yeah. So let's let's go here. Then I don't have to worry about this square, and I can do some other stuff with my pieces. Or I can go here and prevent this, but then again, I have to worry about this. Okay, I have this threat. He probably jump here. I'll just go here. I mean, I could consider some other some other moves, but I, I don't see which. Maybe here. Now I'm hitting, not not the queen, but I'm hitting the bishop, I'm hitting uh, h4. Oh, yeah. This would be nice, but my queen is hanging, unfortunately. What about c5 hitting the knight? Yeah, he can just take. So my IT spins, so he is exploiting this fact. Can I just go here? And then renewing the threat. I can try sacrificing maybe. So maybe here. Well, this really re renews the threat, so I think I will I'll just go here. If, if he goes here, I can even play a5. Hmm. Not easy decision. Okay, let's renew the threat. And this also comes with a skewer. I'm sorry, with the fork. I have to think about my. Oh, he does do sacrifice. Okay. Okay, so he's going all in. I don't have much much choice. I cannot play with the piece down, so I have to accept the, this this offer. Okay, now I'm thinking about. Queen here, okay, he'll, he'll come here for sure. So this and this doesn't work. Unless if I play b6 now. If I play b6, and then I can do, do tricks. Yeah, I don't need, need to be afraid of backward pawn here. He doesn't have much heavy pieces to attack it. So let me just play b6 and then 
have his options here. I mean, he can play this. Oh yeah, this is the threat. And if I take, he takes, and I can just take, take, take. I don't see any problems. So let's let's play b6. So stopping this knight, I don't care about this backward pawn. He doesn't have enough heavy pieces to challenge it. Oh, he's giving, okay. If I take, yeah, if I take, he takes with check. So. I don't want to do this. So yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And dangerous. So if I move my queen, I am renewing the this threat. He cannot go here. He can go here, okay, but Should bring my other rook now, and then no. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. Check. Replace this. I can take with this pawn. Maybe he can have perpetual. Maybe. Huh. Should be my book here and then do something like this. Unless he has some checkmate track which I don't which I don't see. Something like this and this. I don't know. I really don't see what what else he have. But this doesn't look this doesn't look nice. Maybe I could play my bishop here, yeah, and then take away this this idea at least. Hmm, and maybe maybe take my king back. Yeah, this this could this could this could be a good defensive move. Okay, maybe I will get checkmated, maybe not, I'm, I'm not sure. You never know in these kind of positions. I'm glad that this knight is out of play currently, so I need to bring my other rook in the game. Just just to do something. This rook doesn't do anything. Maybe bring my king here, my other rook here. Then if he takes, he's in trouble. Yeah, maybe 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 king to h8 is is a move here. I mean, he has plenty of times. He can now think for half an hour about how to continue the attack. So let's see what what will he come come up with. Okay. This video is yeah it will it will be a long video because it's a long game but I hope it will be instructive mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the and the position and okay. Yeah, he wants to go here and to trap my bishop. Okay, so if I go king h8, he goes here, I go here, he takes, I can just bring my rook. This 
can ring and then I can bring my rook away. So I think king h8 should work. Because then I can just take the rook. I, I don't I'm not afraid of checks or checkmates. Yeah, but it does threaten. Okay, so if I go here, let's say he goes here, I take the rook, he takes. Then he's threatening this my queen. If I go here. He can take, I take with a check. Okay, I think this could work. Let's just see once again. So, King h8, he pushes the pawn. I take the rook. He takes the bishop, threatening checkmate on g7. I play rook g8. Now his queen is pinned. If he then takes my queen, I take with the check. And then later on I can block his his pawn and take this pawn. If he so my rook is here, if he takes with uh, if he takes my queen, then again I take with the check. And then I can move my queen and I win. Okay. So, as far as I can calculate this, this looks fine. We'll see if I missed something in the calculation. If he doesn't push, I think my next move will be this. And then finally bringing my bishop out. So this is a good calculation exercise and yeah I don't have much time I I, I wish I would have more time but I didn't, did listen to Andras thought today he was talking about uh, this perception of being in time trouble when in fact you are not okay so he realized this this threat okay so now I'm thinking about uh, rook to g8 I just need to see if there are some tricks involved because then again, this is vulnerable, but I can bring my other rook then to defend this. And by bring, having the rook aligned with the queen and bishop is... The queen and the king is is a nice thing to have. So I think I will, I will bring my rook here. I don't see any immediate threats. Yeah, I will do this. So this also threatens. I can play something, some moves like, like this, maybe, or we'll see. So I was, I was speak, uh, speaking that uh, I was telling that many times you you feel the pressure of the clock, but with uh, the increment you shouldn't be pressured. You should be able to convert any game. Okay, so let's calculate this quickly. So uh, bishop to h6, he can push the pawn. Okay. I can take the pawn. If he takes, I take with the rook and I, I just win the game. If he takes, I win the game immediately. If he pushes, I take with the pawn. He cannot take. Yeah, I think this could work. I, I don't understand this move. Oh yeah, I understand he wants to defend the pawn. Yeah, this makes sense. But this pawn will be pinned for a long, long time. I can even double up. Okay, let's let's do this. Now I can even think about doubling up here. His knight is not participating in the game. This is good. Neither is my rook, but okay, now if if he pushes then my uh, queen is under attack. So I can play my queen here now and uh, pin his rook. Okay, I, I didn't see this pin. This was the problem. Yeah, let's let's play this. I think I will. Just to treat my, my bishop on the other side of the board. Mm. 
Okay, again with the pressure, but a good thing that this pin is still on. I think I'll now, now try to double. Yeah, but if I go here, he can just move the knight, the, the king, and then my bishop is not looking very good. But if I play this, I can just take. So now, now again, I have this problem. Now I'm in the real time trouble officially. Okay, I'll still go here, I don't have time to calculate, but if he if he moves his king, I will double up. And then I can do some damage, I can do some double attacks. So I'm I'm sacrificing this bishop now. Yeah, it's not good. I'm sacrificing my bishop without any calculations, but I, I don't see how to how to defend this position. My f7 is, is really really a problem. He probably move his king now. Mm -hmm. I'm losing the bishop, but if I take takes in the other rook. I'll just bring another rook immediately and I'll try to do some damage. Let him take the bishop. I mean, in a perpetual check in this in this point will be favorable for me because I'm low on time. I don't have time to calculate. He will be up in the material very soon. Once he activates his knight, I'm I'm done. Maybe he'll not even take. He's not in the hurry to take it. Okay, he does take. So let's try to do some damage. I see some some nice tricks here. Oh, it's not not easy. It's difficult. Difficult position. I'm just waiting for <laughs> to hear the sound of checkmate. To be honest, I'm low on time.
I mean, it's not easy for him, but he at least he has time. Yeah, now he he gives up queen for two rooks. And I have to accept it. It will be very difficult from now on. It's not easy. Okay, let's let's make some threats. Let's try to, to make pass pawn, create pass pawn maybe. We we'll just take the pawn. Try to create some threats here. Maybe I'll put my, my knight here, my king here, just to, to be sure that my knight, my pawns are protected and then maybe go somewhere. I mean, there are many pawns on the board, so I think uh, well, he, he's better, definitely. Queen against rook and two pieces. Not sure I can win this. Not sure I can even draw this. I should be able to draw with the queen. Queen can give perpetual very easily if he allows me to do so. And his king is very exposed. So I hope that well, maybe maybe I have permanent uh, drawing chances here I'm not sure I'll have to play king to g8 to g8 at some point just to secure my pawns and then go with the queen we probably just go here attacking my pawn I can just push forward and then if I go here then he has some troubles he cannot stop me easily Maybe he should be thinking about unpinning, unpinning the rook at some point. Okay, I think I'll just go here. I will not waste much time on this. So now he has trouble stopping this pawn. He should just go here. Yeah, and then I will put my king here and try to to get some counterplay. Or I can just play queen here. Yeah, this this looks nice. Actually, it's not so easy for him now. Because from here I can check and support my my pawn. If I go here, how, how can he stop my, my, my promotion? I don't see how. This is pinned. This knight cannot do it. I really don't see. Yeah, let's just play this. I think I, I, I can just promote here. He cannot stop my promotion with the check. I have two queens and... Very interesting endgame if he decides to play two queens against rook and two minor pieces. You don't see this every day. Hmm. Yeah. Or he can just checkmate me before. I don't see how. Okay, let's just... 
Ja. Okay. Now he wants me to take and then he can do some stuff. But I can promote with check, so I will, I will just do this. I will not waste my time on this obvious moves. Yeah, he does have a mating net, so I have, I have to be careful. But I have many checks. Okay. So let's say that I take the pawn, what can he do? He can check, I can go here, he can check, yeah, and then take my queen. Okay, I have to be careful about this stuff. I have to be careful. I think I will play with my queen here, so that... So I don't want to allow this check. Oh. I just take the knight, sacrificing. Yeah, I could just sacrifice. I could just take the knight with check. He takes, I take. He plays check, I go here. Or I can play here, he goes here. I think I'll just sacrifice my queen. I don't have time to calculate. I don't think he can checkmate me. Yeah. Maybe there are better moves, but in, in, in this time, this kind of time trouble, I really don't want to, to risk it. So if I go here, check. I go to f8, yeah, he can deliver one more check, I go here and he's out of checks. Yeah, this could work. I mean, yeah, I know it's, it's a sacrilege just to, <laughs> to give the queen for the knight, but... Uh, Given the time pressure and everything, I think this is the best decision I could make. Okay, can I just snip the pawn? I don't see why not. Oh, but I do, because check. Uh, yeah, and then I lose the queen, but... Okay, let's, let's, be, let's be patient here now. His rook is undefended. Let's give check. Okay. Let's give another check. Maybe just to buy some time, if nothing else. Let's check. He goes here. Okay, now uh, out of checks, but so is he. So let me just oh, check here. Okay, let's do this. Maybe I can just snip these pawns.
Okay. I think I'll just take this pawn now. Not sure if this is the right decision, but it's important that he cannot check me. So I will just. I mean, I have to prom to promote my pawn. This is the the idea. No, I'll just I'll just centralize. Then maybe check and then maybe push the pawn. Hmm, I'm really not sure. I don't have a good technique here. Okay, here we go again. Again with the same threats and same ideas. Okay, let's give check. If he goes here. I'll just go here or here. Yeah, now, now there is a checkmate threat. You have to be careful. Okay. Yeah, it's not 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 easy when you have you don't have time to think. Yeah, this check is nice. I'm just worried about this. Yeah, okay. No, I think this check just wins. Okay. Good game, thank you. Okay, Oof, very not not an easy game, not an easy game. I I guess the uh, let let's see the computer analysis. I think it will be just wild. I would say like uh, nine blunders. I made nine, he made eight or something like this. Yeah, you can see the good the, the diagram. It's just it's just so wild. So I will <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, nine blunders, ten blunders. Okay, I won. I, I thought it was nine, eight, but it was. Okay, you know what? This video took really long time, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I will link the game uh, in the in the description box, so you can analyze it with the engine. I I mean, you, you can just see with the engine which which opportunities did we both miss. It was a difficult game. Uh, lots of calculation, so I will analyze the, this game uh, slowly, and uh, I, I want to check um, for every. I want to check all, all all these positions in which the diagram go, went up and down. So I will check everything, and uh, it will take me a long time, probably, and I. It, it doesn't make much sense to to prolong this video. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you stick uh, this far, well, uh, congratulations! I'm I'm very very glad and I'm very thankful that you did. 
And uh, well, see you soon with more games and more chess. Cheers.